Hey, what's going on everyone? In this video, I'm going to discuss one of the most asked questions uh, that I get, which is what kind of portfolio projects should I have uh, to get hired for DevOps, SRE, platform, and other infrastructure kind of dev positions? It's a tough one. I've worked as a technical interviewer across many different companies, uh, hiring for many different uh, dev and ops and DevOps roles. And I've seen a lot of different uh, resumes, GitHub profiles, etc. The people that end up getting hired, if anything, can it's rarely about the GitHub profile. Obviously, you have to have a really strong technical performance, be somebody that people like uh, and can get along with. Uh, it takes a lot of different skills to pass an interview. But when it comes to your uh, kind of GitHub projects and that kind of portfolio part of your application, it's a place where a lot of people are tremendously weak. So it's often just kind of discounted in general uh, or weighted lower. So if you can stand out there, that can give you a very strong edge because you know having a practical real project um, that doesn't <laughs> throw an error as soon as someone clones it and tries to run it, um, can give you a huge leg up because it, it separates you dramatically from the rest of the crowd that's applying for these jobs. So I'm gonna discuss what makes a good learning and portfolio project because I hate wasting time. So if you can double up and make a project that helps you learn the practical skills that you need and that then looks good in your portfolio, uh, that's a real win and it's something you should you should try to do. So I'm gonna discuss what, what, what that project, what I expect that to look like as an interviewer who's clicking on your uh, you know, your GitHub, like, link in your resume. Okay, so I'm gonna run through, let's call it an ideal uh, portfolio project. Just from my perspective, I'm making this up as I go, and yours can look very different. Um, but here's, here's kind of like the finished product, and I'll talk about how to get there in a second, so keep watching. Ideally, uh, it should be a mix of different skills and approaches. Think of combining the most important uh, and sadly most popular technologies that you are likely to work with, right? You're trying to get the biggest kind of percentage hit of like someone seeing the project and being like, oh, we use that. So go for, when in doubt, go for more popular technologies instead of maybe more interesting ones or ones that you think are cooler. Uh, you can play with those in your own time. It's just that uh, I've made this mistake countless times over the last 10 or 15 years where I learned something that I think is cooler and better and no one is impressed, no one cares. And one out of 15 hiring managers gonna also do that cool stuff in their free time. And then their question is gonna be like, but like, you're cool just like using this other boring technology, right? Cause that's what we've standardized on. So using cool or different technologies doesn't set you apart as much as you think. Use the commonplace stuff. Um, you're, you're kind of a pipeline person as, as a DevOps in a lot of DevOps roles. So. Uh, something that I would love to see in a project is you've kind of constructed your own pipeline. So say that the end goal is like you're hosting some kind of small web application or even just a static website. It almost doesn't matter. It's about how the DevOps roles are about how you shepherd a change from a developer through to the end user. So through to, to your production environment. Um, and how you chain that pipeline together. A lot of your work is going to be around that. So you begin that chain with uh, some kind of build system, right? Where you're gonna kind of coordinate a lot of this automation, you're gonna do a lot of this stuff, fine. So I would choose the most popular one. Maybe it's Jenkins still, maybe it's Circle now, I don't, I don't know what it is. But pick kind of, not the hottest one, but the most widespread uh, build system. I would say Jenkins, set yourself up a server that's running that so that you can kind of coordinate your builds and push stuff to your production environment. Fine, how, how do you set up Jenkins? Well, instead of just uh, creating an instance somewhere and doing like a custom setup on the, on the command line, what you want to do is have a repeatable uh, instance. So either you do that uh, using say Terraform to provision an instance and then run a provisioner using something like, uh, well, maybe a shell script provisioner for something simple, or you wanna show that you can also do Ansible, so you have an Ansible role that you apply to your, you know, your build server that you create at the beginning of the project. So there's that other skill. Or you, you basically set up a Docker environment um, and just have a Docker file 
that uh, creates an image that you then use to actually create a container running Circle CI or or Jenkins on your on your kind of Docker host. It's up to you how you get the thing there, but you see you have this kind of buffet of skills to pick from to demonstrate, and whichever ones you think are kind of the ones that you want to be focusing on, the kind of jobs you want, uh, use those. Some skills that you might want to highlight as part of this pipeline. Uh, configuration management stuff like uh, Chef, Puppet, Ansible, SaltStack. All of these have a kind of like solo mode now, so you don't need like a central configuration server. Um, I, I would use that for provisioning. Keep it simple, as simple as possible for yourself, even though you're building this massively, excessively complicated uh, pipeline of things. In the end, I would love to see basically one Terraform file where I just uh, Terraform plan and apply. And what happens is magically, a uh, potentially an image is built, an instance is provisioned, it's configured, it runs your build service. That build service is automatically configured. It is, and then, then it begins polling your uh, repository that has your website or web app in it. It clones that, it pushes that, it, uh, maybe you wanna go crazy. Uh, you set up a like discovery service of some kind of like console. You uh, create a few, in your Terraform configuration, you create a few uh, web servers. Maybe, you, maybe this is where you demonstrate your cloud skills and you have an auto scaling group and a load balancer in front of them and some kind of data store that gets set up, right? Like you can go as crazy as you want with this and use it as a learning project to build out everything you're studying as you study it, but all for this big sort of fake web app. You know, you're pretending that you are the, the, the CTO, the only tech uh, employee for, uh, for a company that's building some kind of startup, you know, web product, a website or a very simple web app. So I hope that makes sense. You're, you're probably gonna be a pipeline person in this industry, uh, at least at first, and, and getting really good at demonstrating uh, that you can build different aspects of this pipeline, and most importantly, one, one pipeline uh, that goes beginning to end, uh, that's, that's a good project, that would be a great project. Start simple, don't start with the entire complexity, the sort of end product that I just described. Uh, you might start with a custom Jenkins server, that pulls from like, you know, your repo. And um, then you have like a statically created web server and it's like statically configured to push your little static web app to that web server every time you update the GitHub repo. Fine, that's a great place to start. Then you start pulling out components, automating them, tying them together. Does that make sense? As you study. So that gives you the practical uh, learning aspect and it gives you, in the end, everything is in code, right? Nothing is like custom. You don't log in anywhere and do stuff. You, you persist everything in text files uh, and then just run a few local commands to set everything up, configure everything, uh, and then create all of this infrastructure on demand. That would be an impressive DevOps project. And any part of that would be an impressive DevOps project. You don't need to build the whole thing. You certainly don't need to build it all at once. Okay, I hope that answers the kind of thing that I'm looking for, why I'm looking for that kind of thing, and the types of technologies and projects you can do uh, to start demonstrating that you know that. Uh, as always, like and subscribe if you want more of these. I love you all very much. Thanks for all the support. See you all in the next one. Peace.